morning, everyone. Thanks once again for being here with me. Today we celebrate the Thursday of the 11th week of Ordinary Time. The green vestments are here. In today's readings, uh, we hear from the book of Sirach the praises of both Elijah and Elisha from the Old Testament. Sort of a wrap-up to the time that we've spent with them in the first reading of the book of Kings. And in the Gospel, in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus teaches us that wonderful prayer, the Lord's Prayer, our, the Our Father. So, let us now begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to be transformed by the word of the Lord proclaimed here in our midst, let us first call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners Christ. Have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Like a fire, there appeared the prophet Elijah, whose words were as a flaming furnace. Their staff of bread he shattered. In his zeal he reduced them to straits. By the Lord's word he shut up the heavens, and three times brought down fire. How awesome are you, Elijah, in your wondrous deeds, whose glory is equal to yours. You brought a dead man back to life from the netherworld by the will of the Lord. You sent kings down to destruction and easily broke their power into pieces. You brought down nobles from their bed of sickness. You heard threats at Sinai and Horeb avenging judgments. You anointed kings who should inflict vengeance and a prophet as your successor. You were taken aloft in a whirlwind of fire in a chariot with fiery horses. You were destined, it is written, in a time to come, to put an end to wrath before the day of the Lord, to turn back the hearts of fathers towards their sons, and to reestablish the tribes of Jacob. Blessed is he who shall have seen you, and who falls asleep in your friendship. For we live only in our life, but after death our name will not be such, O Elijah, Develop, enveloped in the whirlwind. Then Elisha, filled with the twofold portion of his spirit, wrought many marvels by his mere word. During his lifetime he feared no one, nor was any man able to intimidate his will. Nothing was beyond his power. Beneath him flesh was brought back to life. In life he performed wonders, and after death, marvelous deeds. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Justice and judgment are the foundations of his throne. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes round about. His lightnings illuminate the world. The earth seethes and trembles. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord. Before the Lord of all the earth, the heavens proclaim his justice, and all peoples see his glory. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. All who worship graven things are put to shame. 
who glory in the things of naught, all gods are prostrate before him. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. You have received the spirit of adoption as sons and daughters, through which we cry, Abba, Father. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples in praying, do not babble like the pagans who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. This is how you are to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Protestant brothers and sisters call that the Lord's Prayer. As a general rule, that's not really our terminology. We use simply the Our Father as our way of speaking about it. And the version that we pray usually is Matthew's version that we just heard. You'll notice there's nothing at the end for the kingdom, the power, and the glory. That's in Luke's version. And that's kind of the Protestant version that's often used. They're both, they are both correct, of course. Uh, you can pray in any which way that you wish. This has kind of become ours. Uh, I would blame St. Augustine for that more than any other. He preferred Matthew's gospel over most of the rest of them. That's why it's first. Uh, it's listed first in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's because Augustine preferred it. Uh, in any case, it really doesn't matter. It is indeed a most beautiful prayer. It is the prayer that we go to when we don't know how to pray. It's become rote for most of us. We can say it without thinking about it, and I think that's probably a disservice to us and to the beauty of the prayer itself, because in many respects, it is so sublime in its ways. It is amazing. Father John Carapi, uh, in many years ago, did a whole series just on the Our Father and what that meant. This was several hours where he delved into that uh, as part of his discussion of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And we should... Embrace this prayer more. It becomes kind of the go-to prayer, but I think we've—I think it's almost toothless in our minds. We say it, we get comfort from the saying of it, but the words themselves don't always affect us like they should. And we really need to learn more about this. Spending time breaking apart the Our Father, its various pieces and what they mean, it's very important. In particular, now we don't have time to do that today. That's actually probably a master's level class if we really wanted to do it well. But there's so much we can say. We'll have to distill it down to something important. But we'll let Matthew do that for us. Because, as you may have noticed, after the Lord teaches the prayer, he focuses on one section. And in many respects, it is one of the most important sections. Because if you'll notice, everything we're asking in here is for God to do for us, with one exception. And that's the exception that Jesus chose to emphasize. Because us forgiving others is the only part of this prayer that we own. That's the free will piece. That's the part that we are pledging to do. That's the part that it's more than just a pledge. As Jesus says afterwards, it's an expectation and a requirement. Because if you wish for God to forgive you, you must forgive your brother and your sister. That's important. It must happen. Jesus gives many parables, which we'll hear in the coming months during our exploration of Matthew's gospel, about how thou shalt forgive your neighbor, your brother, your friend, the stranger. It doesn't matter. 
Forgive though, as we forgive those who trespass against us. This is a requirement. In this time of social unrest, in this time of pandemic, in this time of discussion, which can turn very, very dark very quickly, because so many of us are affected by all these things. How could we not be? But we have to remember that everyone else around us is as well. It's amazing looking back over the last three months how during this coronavirus we would get conflicting uh, advice all the time from people. Do this. No, wait a minute. That's not all that good. Do that. Well, maybe we should do something other. Nobody knows. That's what we've learned with this. Nobody really knows. Everybody has the best of intentions and they want the best for all. But we all look at this differently. And some who have power have the ability to influence others. But they still come from their own opinion. We just don't know. We have to remember everybody's trying to do their best. I've, been, I've had many discussions with folks in my job as family ministries where families are divided. And they actually draw lines in the sand. If you won't behave the way I wish you to, you don't get to come to my house. I won't come to your house. We will not have a relationship like we had before because of this. That is exactly what Christ is telling us not to do. What's more important than, than where we are now, what's more important of whether we wear a mask or not, whether we believe or not, whether we are extremely cautious or, or deny that there's a problem, we are still human and our relationships must be kept whole. They must be kept cordial. They must be kept joyful. We must not destroy the relationships we have with our own family and friends because we disagree on how to work with something that no one really understands. Everyone is trying to do their best. And yes, everyone is also afraid. Even those who deny are still afraid. That's just how they deal with it. Ultimately, we must not let the crises of life Things that happen around us destroy our goodwill for the rest of humanity. The racial unrest that we experience now breaks our hearts because ultimately it's all that. No one is willing to forgive anyone. Everyone suspects the other of evil intent. Maybe that's true. I don't know. Caution, of course, is always cared for. But we have the ability to work for peace and for justice. We have to recognize and not dismiss the concerns of our brothers and sisters, no matter what side of they're on. There is a way through the division that brings us together. There is a way. That way is Jesus Christ. Forgive us, Lord, as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's how we do it. We have to work now, that does not mean forgiveness is not something to say, okay, we're done, isn't that nice, and we go home and nothing changes. Forgiveness means I forgive you, you forgive me, and we both bring to that forgiveness a desire to make things better. That's what we need to concentrate on. Everyone needs to find a way to forgive and to work and to make things better. And recognize, and do not dismiss the other side. Because that's simply being tone deaf. Nothing changes. You know, we keep coming back to this over and over and over again every, every few years. You think we would have learned by now. But the problem is, everybody that doesn't like it just simply waits and tempers cool and the seasons change and all of a sudden everything's back to the way they were. We have a unique opportunity today to make sure that doesn't happen. That things change and get better. There are changes that must be made. That does not mean destroying the other side. That means coming together and deciding what's right. I have the will to search for it, and I know you do too. During this time of difficulty, during this time of unprecedented change, during this time of unrest and injustice, let us pray to Jesus Christ to forgive us our sins as we actively work to forgive all those around us and make this world a better place. God the Father is our Father. 
He is the father of all of humanity. He wills the life and the happiness of all his children. Let us humbly today turn to him with the, our own needs and the needs of the entire world. For the church throughout the world. That God will continue to guide us in bringing his word to life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, may God guide them in upholding human dignity in policy and in practice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are hungry or thirsty. May God show compassion to them for their suffering and enliven the communities around them to help them meet their needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the church gathered today within the sound of my voice, may God give us courage in leading lives of faithfulness in both word and deed, seeking always his forgiveness and extending that forgiveness to all that we encounter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have died, may God grant them mercy and everlasting peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, hear these prayers we have offered to you here today. We ask them to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we heard proclaimed in today's word, and at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you and your families today and always. Let us pray. As this reception of your divine word, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you today and always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Remain in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.